welcome back to another episode of Audit Trails. Today we're going to be discussing NIST 853 Revision 5. So really on this video we're going to focus on what are the major changes coming from Revision 4 to the recently released Revision 5. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I want to start off with a timeline. So uh, the first public draft was published August 15th of 2017. Uh, then the final draft release was set for publication in December of 2018. And then the final publication date was set for March of 2019. But as of September of 2019, the Revision 5 did get delayed um, due to potential disagreements of the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs and re other U.S. agencies. So there was just some more tweaking that they had to do to the revision. And then it finally got released on September 23rd of 2020. So it's just an overall timeline. So that included like the comments period and, and stuff like that of all the different draft statuses and stuff. All right, so what are some of the major changes that happened going from revision four to revision five? So uh, making security and privacy controls more outcome based. So what does that mean? So this is great news because with um, new policies like GDPR and even like the California Consumer Privacy Act, um, you don't really know exactly what a regulation calls for, but NIST 853 really outlines that for you. So this is really good. So it, instead of telling you how to get there, it really focuses on the end result, the outcome. So that's good when it comes to the security control. So integrated privacy controls. So they took the privacy controls that used to live in Appendix J of Revision 4 and incorporated them into a new privacy family and the and the existing program management family. So some of these controls were also incorporated into security controls throughout revision five. So allowing them to serve as both security and privacy controls, as well as achieving more efficient implementation. So you don't have to go to Appendix J anymore. They're all built into the new revision five checklist and, and kind of publication. So they also separated the control selection from the actual controls. So having a consolidated and like standalone control catalog allows them to be used um, by different communities of interest, like system engineers, architects, uh, software developers, stuff like that. So they can interest now and better collaborate on points of intersection and, and kind of use an individualized process for achieving their specific uh, controls and, and the outcomes associated with them. So um, it's, it's going to allow t specific teams and, and divisions within your organization kind of focus on their individual mission and business needs kind of going forward. So it did integrate risk management. So that kind of goes along with the privacy controls. There's a lot of discussion throughout revision five that includes risk management and kind of the outcome and, and what they're really looking for with a specific control. And then it did clarify the relationship between security and privacy. So same thing with risk management. You'll find a lot of this throughout the discussions on each different control of revision five. And there was also a few um, different things that are important to call out. So they eliminated the term information system and just replaced it with the term system so that this uh, publication can be applied to any type of system. So whether it's like general purpose systems, um, cyber, physical, industrial, or, or even IOT devices. So kind of made it a little bit more broad so that this can be applied to many different instances. Um, they got rid of the emphasis on federal as much in Rev 5. So this can really be used by non-federal organizations. It could be used by anyone. It's, it's really a great publication and kind of a good um, standard or best practice to have within your um, cyber organization and, and your organization holistically. And then lastly, uh, they did incorporate like new um, state of the practice controls based on threat intelligence and like attack data and, and stuff like that to really strengthen cybersecurity and privacy governance and accountability. So you'll see a lot of that as you're looking at different controls throughout the um, new revision five. 
So what's new? Out of all the things that we just talked about, um, there's a couple new things that I want to call out specifically. So first, uh, two new control families. The first one is personally identifiable information processing and transparency. So that's a mouthful. So this family really focuses on addressing privacy risk and management. Um, it's, uh, it's not too bad there's a lot of stuff in there but really focus on like your control baseline and stuff like that and what you're trying to achieve as an organization before you kind of implement all these controls and then the last one which is a big one that i really want to discuss so supply chain risk management so this control family integrates supply chain risk management aspects throughout uh, the other control families to help protect like your system components, um, products, services that are all critical systems and infrastructures. So these help ensure that like security and privacy requirements, threats and, and other concerns are addressed throughout your system development lifecycle and, and um, your supply chain. So there's going to be a lot of work to be done, I feel like, within this family. Um, there's a lot of good information in there. I definitely would look at that new family specifically because like I said, there's going to be a lot of requirements and a lot of work to be done there. So another thing is NIST SP-853B. So as everyone I'm sure is familiar with, there's an 853A, which to my knowledge is not released quite yet, but it is coming. They're working on it. That's like the uh, auditor's guidance for 853, if you will. So um, if you're auditing a specific control, they will go ahead and say, these are the five things that you're looking for, for instance, and kind of lay them out for you in a nice, easy to read fashion. So 853B, is a new document and it's uh, part of 853 um, holistically. So this is the control baseline. So they used to be integrated into revision four um, along with the rest of the controls and everything like that, but they have separated that document now. So there's three security baselines and one privacy baseline that are outlined within this document. So you got your low, moderate and high um, and it'll kind of lay out the requirements and what controls are required at each control baseline and, and impact level. So other organizations can kind of choose to customize their own baselines in accordance with like their mission and business needs and stuff like that. But this document does lay it out and kind of what the government thinks at each impact level, what controls are necessary. So one thing I do want to mention is that um, now that it is a separate document, it kind of lives on its own. We, there is room for interpretation here in terms of that these guidelines and control baselines may continue to evolve over time and kind of change. So um, they could communicate these changes through this separate document. That's just one of the speculations that, that are out there on many of the um, webinars and stuff that I've been reading. So, And then that being said, um, FedRAMP controls for cloud environments and stuff like that. They're not updated to revision five yet, but they have posted a few forums and stuff like that on their website that it's coming soon. So you'd still have to work off the old revision four um, moderate and low and high impact levels, but um, more to come on that. And here's just some high level statistics on the new revision five so just a quick analysis i kind of did here so there's about 66 new base controls um and that's among 13 of, of the families so um just new controls entirely and that, and that can that includes a, a big portion of those new control families we discussed so personally identifiable information processing and transparency and supply chain risk management and then there's a few new ones throughout the other families as well of course um, there was about 78 enhancements withdrawn in the document, um, about 191 new enhancements. Keep in mind that's num that number is a lot larger because of the 66 new base controls. There's also enhancements on several of those. And then there's about 100 new parameters that change to existing controls. So um, requirements within the existing controls and kind of what you have to do to achieve that specific control. So a lot of stuff changed in this document. Um, Obviously, it's way too much to cover in one video, so uh, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Audit Trails.